Summary Redacted, a hotel in Redacted, Washington, has had reports of hauntings for well over four decades, specifically in room 401. Most of these reports are no more than hearsay. Some are backed up by photographic evidence, and some more recent ones have been captured on video. Many of these incidents were reported to hotel staff and logged. There have also been a number of missing person reports related to room 401, and even some hospitalizations. The ones most pertinent to this report will be listed below. Two weeks ago, a practically unknown YouTuber named Redacted, referred to as John going forward, posted a series of videos of him staying in the room over the course of a week. After the third day, the videos ended. Hotel staff reported that he never came down to check out at the end of his stay, and his belongings were still in the room when cleaning staff went to make it ready for the next guest. The police were contacted, at which point our organization was made aware of the incident, which will be detailed below. Hotel Reports 41271 Guest Reports Knocking on the Window Ask for security to get them to stop. Guest is on the fourth floor in 401, and there is no balcony below their window. Security reported no one outside the hotel during their patrol. 61175. Guest complained their room doesn't have a slot for the new keycard that they were issued for room 401. All doors should have been upgraded earlier this year. Maintenance was sent to room 401 to check, and they found the door did in fact not have a slot for the new keycard system. A key was issued, and the door will be upgraded after their stay. 61775 Guests complain that the room doesn't have a slot for the new keycard that they were issued for for room 401. Maintenance says the door was upgraded on the 15th, but upon the inspection, the old style keyhole was present, and Guest was moved to another room. 618 is 75. Maintenance reports when they went to upgrade the door of room 401, the old door was completely missing. A new door was installed. 620 75. Guest reported that they did not have a door on the room, 401. They were moved to another room and maintenance was called. Maintenance reports the door frame for 401 is too small for the new door. They will call the carpenter to remove the old frame and install a new one tomorrow. 621-75 Maintenance reports the carpenter found the door frame to be the same size as the one that he was installing. Maintenance checked in that the new door fit the old frame. New door was installed. 629-75 Janitorial reports the door for room 401 had been painted a different color than the rest of the doors on the floor. The key card did work, however. 1-1-79 Guests complained their door in room 401 was left wide open when they woke up in the morning. They have the only key other than janitorial but janitorial doesn't service rooms overnight. Guest was offered a free night and dinner from the kitchen and accepted with no further incident. 317.80 Guest in 403 complained about screaming in the room to the left, room 401. Front desk called 401 but no one answered. A concierge was sent up and confirmed that someone in the room, a man, was screaming for help. The only guest registered to the room was a woman, name redacted. Security was called, but the door did not have a slot for the keycard, and none of the old keys worked. They did not receive a verbal response from the occupants of the room, other than the screaming. They were unable to force the door open, and the police were called. The screaming stopped as the police arrived on the floor. Police battered the door down to find the room completely empty. Even the furniture was gone. 
Namer Dadid did not show up to check out after his day. 528-83 Guest in 401 has made several noise complaints about the room to the right, 403. Room 403 is unoccupied. We sent security to check the room, but they found no signs anyone had been inside since the previous guest. 7-11-89 Guest requested early checkout. Guest was visibly shaken and remarked that they were relieved to have found the lobby. Guest was told about the policy about paying for the remainder of their stay and said that that was fine. Management offered to waive the rest of the charges but asked for a reason for the early departure. The guest refused to talk about it, said that it was fine if they were charged, they just wanted to leave. Management waived the entire stay. 11-10-92 A woman came down to the lobby looking very confused. She said that she was in room 401 and that her card wasn't working. The reservation for 401 was under a different guest name, and the key card she produced was for a different hotel. We asked for an ID and she produced a card that none of the staff had recognized. She left the lobby, returning an hour later in a hysterical state. She approached the front desk, asking for a room. She tried to pay with some kind of foreign currency and was turned away, at which point she broke down. She wouldn't respond to questions and was just covering her ears and crying. The police were called and she was escorted off the property. 914-95 Guest complained that the tub in room 401 was filling up and starting to overflow with black fluid. Maintenance was called but insisted 401 has a shower and no tub. When maintenance went to check the room, the guest said that they never made any such complaint. The shower was inspected and found to be in working order. 1030-97 Guest complained that the cleaning crew keeps walking into the room despite the do not disturb placard being placed on their door. Checked with janitorial and they said that they hadn't been to the floor yet today. And they denied entering rooms with the placards up. The crew member's appearance in uniform as described by the guest didn't match up with any of our janitorial crew. Guest was offered a free night and dinner from the kitchen. 1225-99 A guest in room 401 ordered room service. When it was delivered, the server was shot through the door. Police were called and made contact with the guest. Hotel staff weren't privy to their conversation, but the officers seemed to become increasingly nervous as the situation went on. A shot was heard from inside the room and police went in. They found the guest dead with a self-inflicted gunshot to the head. The server was only superficially wounded, and we were told that he would make a full recovery very quickly. 1-1-2000 A loud explosion was heard from room 401. Walls, mirrors, and windows from the adjacent two rooms and the rooms above and below, and the room across the hall were cracked or shattered. When security opened the door to 401, they found the room completely intact. The guest said that he had been awake at the time the explosion had happened, but he hadn't heard anything. All affected guest stays were calmed. 4-15-2000 Guest complained that they could not find room 401. A concierge was sent to help them, but the door to the room was simply gone. Security took pictures of the wall where the door should have been, and the wallpaper pattern was different than that of the rest of the hotel. 416 2000. Maintenance reports that when they showed up outside of 401 with the carpenters, the door was back, as was the original wallpaper. 7 4 2007. A guest complained that when they entered the room 401, another guest was already in there. Management verified the room should have been unoccupied, but a concierge went up to the room and verified that it was empty. The guest remarked that they must have gone to the wrong room because the furniture was different. 228-2011 Guest from 401 did not come back down to check out and there was no answer on the room's phone. A concierge was sent up and upon opening the door, he found the guest frantically pacing the room. 
She screamed at him to stay back and then threw a desk chair through the window and jumped out. Security was dispatched to secure the scene, but no body was found outside, and the window for 401 was intact. Maintenance confirmed the window was destroyed inside the room, and will replace it tomorrow. The guest's family was also contacted to retrieve her belongings from the room. 3-1-2011 Maintenance reports that when they entered room 401 to replace the window, they found it still intact. The previous guest's belongings were gone, however. 2-16-2016 Guest from 401 requested early checkout just after 10pm. Would not say why, though she looked visibly shaken. Management comp the night. 10-12-2016 Guest in room 403 reports someone in the adjacent room 401 is calling their name quietly through the wall. 401 is currently unoccupied. Security entered 401 and verified that it was empty. Guest was moved to a different room and his stay was calmed. 125-2017 Guest in 401 did not show up to check out. Guest is not answering the room phone or the cell number that we have on file. A concierge was sent to his room and found his belongings but the guest was not present. We'll keep them in the room for the remainder of the day while we wait for the guest to return. 126-2017 Guest in room 401 did not return to check out as scheduled yesterday. His belongings are being moved to lost and found. The police are being contacted. Video evidence. Video recovered from a flash drive found in the room. Transcribed below. Video begins inside room 401. The camera is pointed down at the bed before swinging up rapidly and panning across the room. Across from the bed is a small set of drawers with a TV mounted on top. To the left of that in the corner is a desk with a lamp and what appears to be a guest laptop. The window on the back wall has the blinds and curtains closed, but no light is seeping through so it appears to be nighttime. The guest gets out of bed slowly and backs away from the front of the room as she pans the camera towards the door. A short hallway leads to the door, with the closet on the left and the open bathroom door on the right. The female guest is breathing erratically. Okay, no one is going to believe what I just saw. Something came out of the bathroom and ran back in. It was, it looked human like a woman, but kind of, I don't know. There is a sudden noise from the bathroom. It sounds halfway between a loud electrical discharge and human screaming. The guest's breathing quickens and becomes erratic, and her voice drops to a whisper. Oh, what the heck? The camera backs against the wall opposite the bathroom and slowly approaches the door. Jesus Christ, please don't let me die trying to film this. As she approaches the bathroom, the noise blasts out again a lot of this time. A sea green glow flashes out of the bathroom. What is that? As she slides sideways, pointing the camera through the bathroom door, there appears to be a woman clawing at the far wall beside the toilet. She is naked and her body is slightly transparent and glowing the same color as the flash of light. She arches backwards, clawing at her eyes and her back and bending more than 90 degrees, leaving her face pointing directly at the camera. She opens her mouth and screams, producing the noise from earlier, only much louder this time. Holy crap! There's a burst of a sea green light as the noise peaks and then goes silent. The woman is gone. What the? Hello? The camera pans around the bathroom, but no sign of the woman can be found, other than scratch marks on the wall behind the toilet and some black fluid pulled on the floor outside of the shower. Man, screw this. And the video ends. YouTube Series A YouTuber named John uploaded a series of videos of him staying at the hotel for five nights. Only three out of the five nights were uploaded to his channel, and those were taken down at our organization's request. Video transcribed below. 
Redacted Hotel, Five Nights Day, Night One. Uploaded January 20th, 2017. The video opens with a shot in the lobby of the hotel. The name on a large sign behind the front desk is blurred. John speaks. I can't believe we're actually here. Let's go. The video cuts to a quick intro, and then back to John in a hotel room. Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy. The video skips with another haunted destination. This time, I'll be staying at the historic Hotel in Washington. I've heard a lot about it, as have you if you've watched my video back in May last year. All kinds of weird stuff happens in room 401. Most of it is only passed around by word of mouth, but the hotel staff say that there is a logbook full of incidents from that room that are just too wild to read. Apparently, management keeps the logbook locked down, and only a handful of longtime employees have had the chance to read the whole thing. But from what I've heard, a simple haunting doesn't even begin to explain some of the things that have happened here. Speaking of here, the camera pans around the room. This is it, the fabled room 401. Let me give you a quick tour. The camera pans back around the room. Well, so far it's mostly just a normal hotel room. The camera moves into the bathroom. Also, nothing extraordinary in here, but we have five days to try and see something wild. I brought enough food and water for the whole stay, so I'll be spending all of it in this room. The hotel Wi-Fi is good too, so I'll be able to upload daily from here as well. Alright everyone, I'm gonna get settled in and we'll pick back up in a bit. The video cuts to a shot mounted in the back corner opposite the computer desk. The computer desk, the TV and drawers in the bathroom hallway can be seen. It's a time-lapse shot of John setting up his computer and settling into the room. The video cuts off suddenly. The video picks up from the computer desk. The shot is centered around John's face. A camera shut off on me while I was setting up, but I'm not going to chalk that up to ghosts just yet. I'm going to go get some food and plan on picking this back up later in the evening. I'll keep a recording from the mount behind, just in case though. The video cuts to a shot from the back corner, opposite of the computer desk. The blinds and curtains appear to be open, as sunlight is flooding the room. A shadow crosses the room as if somebody is walking by the window. John looks up as it is clearing the window and gas. John rushes to the camera, picks it up and aims it out the window. Nothing is there. What was that? The shot replays in slow motion. The shadow is clearly the silhouette of a person. John talks over the clip. This shadow was clearly human shaped, but what you didn't see was the form moving by the window. I only saw it for a split second myself, but it just looked like somebody walking by. By the time that I got the camera there, it was long gone. The video cuts back to the computer desk centered on John's face. Okay. Strong start, I can't explain what we just saw. There's nothing, I mean luck. He picks up the camera and shows the area outside of the window. It's a sheer four-story drop to a parking lot below. There's nowhere for anyone to be walking. He puts the camera back on the desk. Alright, I'll get back to my sandwich and see what else happens. The video cuts to a time lapse from the back corner, opposite of the computer desk. Nothing happens, but it keeps going until sunset. Time lapse stops and the camera starts recording normally as John walks over to the camera. Alright, I guess I'll try to get some shut eye. If nothing else happens, I'll see you in the next video. The time lapse continues as he gets ready for bed, and disappears into the bathroom for a bit, and then goes to sleep. Before long, some kind of orange light starts flashing through the window causing the time lapse to stop and the recording speed to go back to normal. John doesn't wake up, despite the flashes getting more and more intense and a deep humming noise accompanying them. The lights get incredibly bright, and soon every flash fills the room with a blinding white light. A final flash keeps the camera completely washed out for a few seconds. As it goes out, 
A figure can be seen standing over John's bed for a brief moment before the video fades completely to black. As the image fades back in, the figure can no longer be seen, but the door to his room is now wide open. A time lapse begins again and continues through the night without further incident. The video cuts to the computer desk. Whoa man, did you see that? What was this? It cuts to a quick, still image of the figure standing beside his bed. It's basically a silhouette and no features can be seen. It looks like an adult male. And what was all that flashing? I asked the front desk about it and no one else reported anything. Security also didn't see anything weird outside last night. It's getting good, folks. I'm going to do a quick edit job and get this posted so we can start up fresh on day two. See you there, guys. Peace out. There's a quick outro and the video ends. Redacted Hotel, Five Nights Day, Night 2, uploaded January 21st, 2017. The video begins in the parking lot outside of the hotel. The camera is pointed up towards the fourth story. John's hand comes into frame from behind the camera pointing at a window. Okay, that's my window right there, now look at this. The camera pans around the sky. It's a sunny day with no clouds. Y'all aren't going to believe this. There is sped up footage of him making his way through the hotel and back to his room. As he enters the room, the footage returns to normal speed. So, you guys just saw me come back in here with no cuts. And he approaches the window and throws open the curtains. Outside, there is an extremely powerful thunderstorm raging. No sound from it can be heard, however. This is just amazing. The footage cuts to a quick intro and then back to the parking lot. John is talking into a camera while he appears to be mounting it inside of his car. What's up everybody, it's your boy, and it's day two in Redacted Hotel. Okay, so I had a crazy idea, and hopefully this doesn't just end with me having my backup camera stolen. But I'm going to mount this one up in the car and have it focused on my room from outside. See if we can pick up anything weird. Let's see, um, uh, there we go. He makes a few adjustments and sets the zoom so the window to his room takes up most of the frame. I don't want to accidentally film someone else's room all night. He closes the back hatch and his room can still be seen perfectly through the back window of the car. Great, nice. Wait, what the? There appears to be a man walking around in his room. Uh... The video cuts to the other camera mounted in his hotel room. Opposite the computer desk, John enters the room quickly. Hello? He looks around the room briefly. Well, alright, all my stuff is still here. He moves to the window and looks down towards his car. I wonder if I'm focused on the wrong room. The video cuts to John, talking into the camera at the computer desk. Alright, so this is a bit freaky. I verify that I have the camera in the car aimed at the correct window, but this camera doesn't pick up anyone in the room. So again, weird stuff going on. Now I'm going to eat some lunch and we'll see if the spooky stuff picks up again. The video cuts to nighttime. The camera is mounted in the back corner opposite the computer desk. Well, a great start today, but otherwise pretty uneventful. Guess I'm going to head to bed and we'll pick up too. What are you doing in my room? He turns around and as he does, his body shifts, revealing a woman standing in the hallway. She's only wearing a towel and appears to have just showered. What? You're? This is my room, are you? I'm calling the cops. Get out. She runs back into the bathroom, slamming the door. Hey, um, wow, um, all right, hey. He moves towards the bathroom door. I'm going to go down to the lobby, okay? I'm just going to wait down there. If you need clothes or anything, just take whatever you need from the dresser under the TV. Okay? There's no response. Uh, Alright, sorry. I'm not trying to scare you. I'll be in the lobby. Oh, hold on. Let me turn off the camera first. He moves quickly towards the camera, but jerks back around when a sound halfway between a scream and an electrical discharge comes from the bathroom. Hey, are you okay? As he moves back towards the door, the sound happens again, louder this time. 
Um, okay, I'm coming in. As he opens the door, the sound blasts out so loud that it distorts the mic and the camera from across the room. A bright flash of a sea green light washes out the screen for a moment as John reels back and covers his face. He drops back against the closet door and sits for a moment, rubbing his eyes. What the heck? Hello? Are you okay? He stands up shakily and leans into the bathroom. Holy crap. The video cuts to a shot of the bathroom. There's a large puddle of black fluid on the ground. I don't even know where to begin with what just happened. I just hope that she's alright. I'm, uh, I think I'm done recording for the night. Yeah, see you guys tomorrow, I guess. The video ends. No outro is shown. Redacted Hotel, Five Nights Day, Night 3. Uploaded January 22nd, 2017. The video begins filming from the computer desk. John is facing the camera. John yawns. Uh, good morning, guys. It's your boy. And it's day three here at the Redacted Hotel, and honestly, I hope it's a slow one. Last night was pretty brutal, and as you probably saw, I don't. I'm still processing it. So I'm not going to say much right now. Just gonna start with breakfast and see how it goes. He raises a steaming coffee cup to the camera and it cuts to a quick intro. And then a time lapse of the room from the back corner opposite the computer desk. He moves around the room watching TV, working on the computer, laying in bed, etc. The video drops to normal speed and he enters then quickly exits the bathroom. Huh? He walks over to the camera and picks it up, and then returns to the bathroom. So this is weird. The camera pans across the bathroom, nothing looking out of place. I didn't touch that black stuff that was on the floor. It was pretty thick and I even had to step around it this morning, but now it's gone. Not a trace of it left. The camera is lowered close to the floor, but there's no evidence that any black fluid remains even on close inspection. Uh, maybe it was, um, I'll probably never know. He sets the camera back on the stand in the back corner and the time lapse continues. It runs until nighttime with no incidents. The video cuts to the computer desk with John facing the camera. Alright, nothing too weird in day three. Sorry for the lackluster upload, but I kind of needed the day if we're being honest. I'm gonna wrap it up for now. I'll leave the time lapse running overnight and if anything happens, I'll add it to tomorrow's video. See you there. Peace. There's a quick outro and the video ends. Additional footage. John's belongings recovered from the room included his camera. On it was a drive with several hours of recorded video from after his final video. The raw video footage is transcribed below. Video starts panning around the room, settling on the curtains. It's very dark and no light is seeping in through the curtains, making it appear to be nighttime. What the heck? According to my phone, it's like 7.30. The sun should still be up. Anyway, some noise from outside woke me up. It must be storming or something. He gets out of bed slowly and turns on the lamp, and then he heads to the window. As he draws the curtains, another set of curtains on the other side of the window can be seen. What in the... He moves the camera close to the window, trying to film through the small gap in the curtains on the other side of the glass. Is that a reflection? Wait a minute. The gap appears at pitch black at first, but the image starts to fade in and it appears to be another room, identical to 401 but mirrored. The gap appears at pitch black at first, but the image starts to fade in and it appears to be another room, identical to 401 but mirrored. No way it can't be. I'd see the camera, what the heck, how is there another... The lamp in the other room flicks on and the camera jerks back from the window. Oh crap! John quickly turns off his lamp and then moves behind the bed. He peeks the camera up to watch the window. The curtains on the other side are drawn and a backlit man appears into room 401. What the heck? The man cups his hands against the window and then looks through them trying to get a better look into room 401. 
He pushes away from the window and scratches his head, walks over to the nightstand and begins making a phone call. This is so weird. As the man stands up at the phone, John's phone rings. No, no way. The man turns his back on the window and John quickly crawls over the bed, picks up the receiver and ducks back behind the bed. Hello? What? Oh, hi. To the camera, it's whispered. It's the front desk. He speaks back into the phone with his normal voice. A noise complaint, what? No, no one is screaming in here, no. No, listen. John holds the receiver over his head. And just as he does, an incredibly loud and human scream rings out from the other side of the window. John drops the phone. Oh, crap. The camera peeks over the bed to the opposite side of the window splattered with blood. Oh, uh. The man's arm slaps up against the window, smearing blood as it slides back down. I, uh. There's a lot of impact against the window. Whatever struck it couldn't be seen through the blood, but a huge clawed hand could be seen for an instant slamming into the window. <laughs> nope. John stands up and runs for the door. When he opens it, he finds himself looking into another room. Opposite him, a large creature slams a giant clawed hand into the window, shattering it. It's very tall, taller than the room, and it's hunched over. Blood is covering most surfaces, and the creature cranks its neck around to lock eyes on a John. John seems to be frozen in place until the creature roars. The scream is the same one from a moment ago, but not much louder and distorted in the camera's mic. John whips around, only to see the creature on the opposite side of the window, cranking its head back towards him. It roars again and crashes its way through the window, destroying everything in the room as it slams and tears its way towards John. John turns again and runs through the doorway, finding himself in the hallway. Come on, come on, come on. The camera pans left and right quickly. Both directions seem to go on forever. Another roar rings out and John just runs to the right. What the heck is happening? As he runs, the camera picks up room numbers from a few doors. They all say 401. Behind him, there is the sound of a door being broken open violently and another roar. John turns as he runs and another creature has entered the hallway. No, please. As he continues to run, a door to his right explodes open. Another creature squeezes its way through the ruined frame as John hugs the left wall, moving around it as quickly as possible. Get back! As he continues to run, you can start to hear his breathing becoming labored. More doors are heard breaking open and more roars are heard. It sounds like there's an army of creatures right behind him. Suddenly, John trips. No! The camera spills out of John's hand and lands upside down, the shot settling on the elevator lobby. What the? What? John is heard scrambling to the camera. He picks it up and points it at his face, checking the lens and then he sweeps it around. The hallway has returned to normal. No doors appear to be damaged and no one else is in the hallway. What the? Alright, screw this. And the footage ends. Raw Video File 2 The footage begins in the hotel lobby. Mom, guys, this isn't the redacted hotel lobby. The architecture and furniture is drastically different from the lobby in his original video. This is so weird. A man in a gray suit walks up to John. Whoa, is that a camera? What kind of camera is that? Just a cheap Sony Handycam, nothing fancy. But, like, where does the cassette go? It's so small. As they talk, the camera pans to the front desk. A woman in a staff uniform walks out of a room behind it. Cassette, why would you... Hold on, sorry. John makes his way over to the front desk. He drops the camera as he talks to the woman, so... It just records the floor in John's feet as they talk. Hey, um, this might sound weird, but where, uh, where are we? Oh, um, what? Could you... What do you mean by where? I mean, okay, what city are we in? What state? Oh, God, please let this happen on my shift. 
what state do you think we're in? Uh, Virginia? Oh, crap. Uh, sir, would you mind having a seat over there by the staff door? What? Why? Where am I? I'm really not supposed to. Look, I'm getting the manager. She can help you out. Just wait over there, please. All right. John walks over towards the chair the woman pointed him towards and stops to talk to the man from earlier. Hey, sorry about that. I'm having a weird day. Hey, no worries. Anything I can do for you? Uh, could you tell me what city and state we're in? The lady at the front desk was being weird about it. Oh, yeah, you look pretty rough. Must be recovering from a hell of a party. Yeah, we're in Springston, Elizabethia. Um, what country is that? What? Obviously, Gwe. Everyone stop talking. The camera snaps over to a group of men in black suits entering the hotel. One of them looks over the front desk where the woman points to John. Sir, please put down the camera and stop recording. I, uh, gotta go, says John. John turns and runs to the elevators. One of them opens as he runs up and in out of the man walks out. He rushes past the man into the elevator and starts pressing the 4 button over and over. The camera pans around the button panel as he does so. Why is there no closed door button on here? Sir, stop. The men in black suits emerge from around the corner in a full sprint. John starts mashing the 4 button frantically. Please, please, come on. The door closes seconds before the men get to the elevator. John frantically almost whispering, What the heck is happening? The doors eventually open on floor 4, and John rushes out of the elevator and runs towards his room. What am I doing? He gets to door 401 but pauses. Of course the door is different. He inserts his key, but the light in the card slot flashes red. Come on. He tries again. Red again. Please. He tries again, and another red flash. A ding is heard from the elevator lobby down the hallway. Come on! He tries again, red flash. The camera pans back to see men in black suits entering the hallway. One points at John, and they start running towards him. Please, come on! He jams the card in and out of the slot over and over, prompting a red flash every time. The camera pans back, and the men in black suits are halfway to him. The lead man is reaching into his jacket for something as he runs. Please! Suddenly, the light flashes green. John throws open the door and rushes in, slamming it shut behind him. Oh god, oh god, what did I do? John can be heard hyperventilating as the camera scans the room. It appears to be his room. All of his stuff is in place and nothing is broken. What? John turned towards the door. Where did they go? They should probably be trying to knock this door down by now. The camera is pressed into the door as John looks through the people. No way. John opens the door cautiously. The hallway is a different color than the one he was just running down. He enters the hallway and it is empty. Okay, I have to get the heck out of here. There's a loud roar from his room. The camera snaps back towards it, only to see a massive clawed hand reach out and slam into John. Muffled screaming can be heard as John is violently dragged back into his room. Everything is blurry as the camera is jerked around, cracking the lens. A few wet crunching sounds are heard, and then another roar, and then the camera drops to the floor. The camera settles on its side facing the window. It and its frame from the floor to the ceiling is completely smashed, and beyond is only darkness. There's a sniffing sound and the footage goes to static, as a loud thud is heard before the footage ends suddenly. Despite the camera appearing to be destroyed, it was found with the rest of John's belongings in good condition. The room was also not destroyed despite the footage as shown in the video. After the video was submitted to research, our organization permanently reserved the entire fourth floor. Guests are still allowed to stay on the floor to keep up appearances, but all stays are strictly monitored, and rooms 401 to 408 are no longer available to the public.